Kia ora koutou and welcome to this webinar, Stats NZ Data for NZ GIS Practitioners. I am Dwayne Wilkins, I'm a Senior Advisor Geospatial Capability Building here at Land Information New Zealand and I'm joined in by my colleague Anne from Stats New Zealand. Anne, what's your role at Stats NZ? Hi Dwayne, I'm a Senior Design Analyst uh, in the Geospatial team. Um, I've been around stats for many years, working in a number of areas, so I'm pretty familiar with the different data sets. Uh, my geospatial uh, experience is, um, has been for the last two or three years doing, uh, doing work designing our statistical geography, so I know my way around the things I need to know, <laughs> but not necessarily some of the um, more exciting stuff that some of you might be doing. So Anne, uh, do, would you like to start sharing your screen? Yeah. Now, can you see that? Yep, that's looking perfect. Great. All right. Well, I've got the same um, set of notes that you all have. And I'll just get going. Um, yep. As I mentioned that. briefly, I've been in stats for close to 30 years now. And um, I thought I would share with you some of the information that's available um, and particularly available for you to use as GIS users to be able to download. Um, of course, we have a wealth of data at StatsNZ and the first link here is, um, is our website, um, which I'm just bringing up now, um, which goes through it changes now and again and as StatsNZ is a national statistics office there is a lot of data available at the national level. Um, if you want to find um, geographic information you have to drill down a little bit and know where to go. Um, a lot of surveys are, are surveys only so um, there's limited um, geographic data available. And the two main data sets where we have a full coverage set of data for, that we can drill down in are mainly the census and um, the business demography data sets. So I'll show you those as we go along. So if you're wanting to find um, geospatial tools, firstly, I'll go through the geospatial tools and, um, and talk you through um, some, of our, um, some of our tools and then we'll go into the data. So if you go into um, Stats and Zs, it's it's a little bit hidden, and our um, and our page at the moment is a little bit basic. But we're working on um, trying to add more uh, information to that. So you'll find on here um, about geographic boundaries and um, and our publications and our standards. So um, I think I've got my notes here. So I'll follow on these notes from here um, through, the, through the notes um, in the Word document. So I thought before we started talking about geographies, I would give you a quick overview of what the geography hierarchy looks like. Um, Stats NZ um, maintains um, local government boundaries uh, uh, and electoral boundaries for, for government. Um, through various acts of parliament. And most of these boundaries are designed on mesh blocks. Um, in, in the middle of that, stats, we have our own statistical geographies that, um, that we've designed that will aggregate up to territorial authority and regional council. Um, so this is statistical area one, which is the lowest level of output geographies now, um, which provides um, areas that will accommodate a um, census population of 100 to 200 people. Next up from that is so SA2, which used to be called area units, census area units, and now called statistical area twos. And then we've got the urban rural geography uh, in a number of different, um, we're developing various definitions of urban and rural. So I'll just show you briefly where to find those. Hmm? Got a query for you. Yes. The, the mesh block. So um, I didn't realise that mesh blocks are, are they staying? They're still being oh. retained or? Sorry, I missed that. Yes, mesh blocks are, are now um, basically our input geography. Yeah. Um, we've got more than 50,000 mesh blocks now for the country. Um, they've been 
split over the years. So some of them ended up with very small um, populations, usual resident populations. So that's why we created the statistical area one, so that we could right. bring the populations up to, um, to a size that's useful for putting out statistical outputs. Yeah. So the mesh blocks are very much alive. Um, local governments are currently going through representation reviews and um, in part of those representation review for wards and other boundaries involve looking at mesh blocks and if needed those mesh blocks will be adjusted um, if requested to by councils. Cool, thanks Anne. So we're currently going through a big process of splitting up these mesh blocks from using the census, last lot of census population data um, and any new data that comes to hand. And one of those um, very useful data sets is the LINS addresses, um, which, which gives us an estimate of how many new houses are in a particular area and which need a new mesh block. Right, so we'll go back to here again and we'll go and have a look at that, um, the geographic data service. So um, it actually is a bit of a misnomer and in, in, in the URL, you see it's called Data Finder. So, <laughs> so, um, so but in, in nowhere does it say it's the Stats NZ New Zealand um, Geographic Data Service, but that's our official name for it. So, so you can go into here. So this here holds all of those geographic boundaries that I referred to. Um, and you can also browse some data in, within here. Um, so you can search for something. So I mentioned urban, urban, urban. So I'll just, for example, show you that. And that brings up our um, urban rural geographies. And I'll talk briefly about them in a minute. Um, and anything that's got urban area in it. If you don't want to search, you can use the, the browse. And down on the left-hand side, you've got our, all our annual boundaries. So every year we do an annual boundary release and we update our geographies. So those, um, those years, so they include geographies for all of those um, areas that are mentioned on the geography diagram. So that includes local government boundaries as well, which are the official set of um, boundaries for local government. We host those. So that where you'll find um, data. Um, you'll also see that there are several types of files. Um, so they're all, um, the, each one's a different, for a different purpose. And I've actually put that on the back of the notes here. Um, so you can see which one you want to use. Um, we've got a high definition version if you're using it for, um, for really techy stuff but the generalized version does um, for most purposes. Um, also in here, we've got some data from census um, and um, for 2008, you need to kind of learn about what the data is, which I'll take you through shortly, um, where it shows you the, um, the, um, the data and it's, um, the census data was split into a number of um, sections, so it's all in there. Another quite wizzy thing, and I'll show you a link to it, is a set of data um, for commuting um, from census by statistical area two. So that was travel to work, where people were going from and to for work. And it was used for a competition that we ran. And I'll show you the winning, um, winning um, entry for that. Um, and did I show you this one? So this is all the census, oh, okay. So this is all the 2018 census data that's available in the DARS service that you can um, just download straight away. So this Ready one here, use. for yeah. example, is the one that you might want to use. And I think it's already in there. And that's got a data table there that looks like that, which is a bit scary, but if you're just wanting population counts, um, this is, would be the one to go to. So you've got 2006, 2013 and 2018 census, usually resident population counts by those SA1s, the replacement for um, mesh blocks. Um, so yes, yeah, so there's a whole range of data in there and each one, I think there's four parts for that individual and that they tell you which, um, which sets of data are in there. 
Um, Oh, it's just taking a little while. I think that was mostly what I wanted to show you. Were there any questions about that? Or Dwayne, did you have anything you wanted to? There's, yeah, there's one question, um, and, and you may or may not know, but is it likely that district slash city council boundaries will be aligned with regional council boundaries? Uh, no, that's not a question for me to answer, really. Um, I think they're designed for different purposes. Yeah. Yep. And um, they do cause us a little, a few problems with those hierarchies. When yeah. we designed those statistical area twos, we had to have a number of those that have got small populations so that they would align between the regional and the TAs. Yeah. Um, to, to my understanding, the regional councils are based on catchments because they're environmentally yeah. focused, whereas districts and city are based on uh, the serving the population. So they have a different, yeah. Well, they have yeah. a relationship, they're different purposes. That's right. There's a community of interest um, issue around territorial authorities, and then the large ones with larger populations, I think over 100. Oh, no, it might be less than that, are city councils rather than district councils. Yeah. Um, also, in here is electric data. Um, so we maintain after each census. Um, Stats NZ is involved with electoral commission designing the new electorates. Um, so in there, so you see there it says proposed and final. So this would have been the work that we did with the electoral commission on when we designed the electorates. So once the census data comes comes in, they can work out what the electoral population is. And there is a data set in there, the census electoral population there by mesh block. But I think I'm I'm sure that's probably only the 18 years and plus and up because there's no publicly available mesh block data now from census. Although if you want some basic data, you can get in touch with our customer data services people and they'll provide you what you want. A lot of people oh, just, had just systems. on that, Anne. The 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 um I just want to give up. A shout out to Stats and their online chat service, uh, particularly with nz.stats. It's it's just fantastic um, being able to chat in real time and get advice saying what the heck am I supposed to be doing with this and how do I get it and and it's just, yeah, there's it's the only uh, agency I'm aware of that has got that option for ordinary uh, people like us using trying to find and work our way through that data. So yeah, kudos to Stats for that. Great, thanks. Um, I think Ron might be sitting on in here. So he's one of the people that you might talk to when you ring up and um, and talk to our customer services officers. And he's very knowledgeable. Uh, he was going to sit in on the room, but because I've got the headphones on, he can't see. Um, now, another set of data that's in here is the population estimates. So rather than, so estimated resident populations are based on census data. But they're, but they're carried forward using other data sets such as um, immigration, births and deaths, um, and rated up to account for un the undercount. So um, they're in the process of um, updating these, and I think there's a new, um, the new updated population estimates are due out at the end of March for national and I think maybe local authority. And then they're continuing on to work on um, lower level estimated resident populations. So these are, um, this data set here is, is also very useful. It, um, it includes estimated resident population. Um, yeah, going backwards by the looks of it, uh, by ethnicity and six and whatever else is in there. So, so that's another very useful data set that's available just for you to download straight into your, whichever um, tool you're using. So, so that's the um, data service. Any question, any more questions before we? Um, just a comment there from Sarah that I, I reposted to the, for everyone. Um, she, Sarah's from Sarah Inglis is just saying Ingles is just saying uh, stats have a great customer service when trying to find data. So yeah, just uh, <laughs> but that's that's great. I and I wouldn't want to try and find it on my own really if I was a new user. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, usually I find it's just a couple of years is just long enough to forget what you learned last time and things have just changed. Uh, but that's that, the same with any, isn't it? That little chat. It's really, yeah. really, really helpful. Right. No, that's great. Um, now, another tool that goes alongside um, that the geographic data service is where all the classifications actually are. So um, if you want to do any concordance to, to between, say, the 2018 version of something to the 2021 version, so you know what's changed, you need to go into ARIA and have a look in there. So, um, so classifications there, or did I just stay? Let's just see what that brings up. There we go. So there's the, um, there's, that's the, once again, that's the classifications, um, which you can see there. Um, so that's a code. So statistical area ones don't have any names, but if you're looking for statistical area twos, those area units, they have, um, they have names attached to them. Um, there's also concordances there, concordances search, um, and there's a whole lot there. Um, so there you go. So there's some concordances to, um, to, to earlier mesh block patterns, for example, um, if you're wanting to um, re-aggregate those. What did I have next? And uh, mm -hmm. just uh, one question here from, from Tony. How wide is the definition of an Asian population? Do you know off the top of your head? Um, I think that accounts for most of Asia. <laughs> Which, I mean, in my memory. mind, that might be from India through down to Indonesia, up to yes. Japan, uh, yes. including China. Uh, so fairly... Fairly a large area because we've got. I'm, I'm assuming it matches the um, country classification. So there's an international country classification. We could have a look at if you like. Um, if yeah, that might. Well, we're in here. Let's have a look classifications. Now, um, the other thing about ethnicity, um, it's ethnicity. Ethnic. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, there's a range of classifications for ethnicity, and there's a way. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, it's probably is that old anyway. Um, there we go. Um, yeah. And they have what's called um, a priority coding, I think, too. So when you've so in census, there will be multiple codes, so you can put down how many ethnicities you belong to so you can then get data by that I think it's summarized and prioritized so that if if you've got Maori in you that gets priority top priority uh, this is just from memory from a long long time ago in a work on census so um, I think that's just Maori there um, there'll be another there's another classification for um, for iwi Yep. So here's the here's the codes for ethnicity. Oh, let's see what's an NFT. Oh, okay. So there's Southeast Asian, Chinese, Indian, and other Asian. Let's yep. see what other Asian is. There you go. So that's oh. um, that's what you'll find in the Asian. So oh, interesting. Goes all the way to from Afghanistan. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Um, there's a, this is a new category to where I think a lot of um, our new immigrants are coming from, mm. from the Middle Eastern countries. So they'll be in there. Cool. Thanks, Anne. Okay. So, um, right. Um, if you just want to look at boundaries, we have another tool called the Geographic Boundary Viewer. And from here, you can type in your address and find out which SA2 you're in, for example. Um, where's, I think the tools are... Taking a moment to load. Just okay. over there, yeah. So if you're looking to see what the statistical area 2, for example, is, 
there, um, you need to click on both of them. At the moment, that's showing up to your Toil Authority. If you want to look for SA2s, um, you click on both of them. And you can type in, I'll just type in my address here. Well, pick me, pick me. Oh, okay, right. <laughs> Seven Johnston Grove. Johnstone. Johnston, no E. Johnstone. Grove. It's no a bit e. slow. It should might have come to, up by now. Might have to take off the E, Anne. Oh, Johnstone. Johnston. Johnston, yeah. Oh, look, I can't there see you is. because I've got there my screen. Is. There you go, tighter. So there you go. That's nice. you. Cool, cool. So that shows you're in the Titan North SA2. And if you want to see what they are, so the mesh blocks are there. So let's have a look at the mesh blocks there. So that will show how the mesh blocks are split for your area. Cool. And we'll also turn on those SA1s, statistical area ones that I was talking about, if I can find them. Oh, here we go, it's under statistical area one. So this will allow you to see the difference between those three geographies. So that's coming up in purple. So you can see with the... Pretty with similar, the right? um, Statistical area ones, particularly in urban areas, they mostly represent the same as the mesh blocks. Yeah. The problem with statistical area ones, which we're going to try and address, is in rural areas, they can cover some rather large geographic areas. And when we did these other urban rural classifications, um, they're a bit problematic. So we're going to have another look at some of those. Right. Um, so you so if also if you want to look at um, where you are for local government purposes you can look in here so you can look for your constituency let's see there you go I'll turn off some of these others um, is that the right one <laughs> can't actually see you're in the lower hut constituency ah, there yep okay yep. and your DHB you can see which DHB you're in as well which might be useful in times of COVID um, yeah, so that's in blue. I'd have to look, go back to see where you are for that. So Hutt Valley. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks, Anne. Right. Um, I mentioned briefly, and I'll just show you them quickly. We've done that. The urban areas have been interesting historically. So our old urban areas used to be quite large in area and um, had stayed static for a good 25, 30 years. They represent a functional space, so they represented a commuting zone. Um, when we did the last major review of the geographies, people were looking for a, um, for a form type classification for the urban areas. So, um, so the urban areas were redeveloped to represent um, where the built up areas were, plus, plus any services such as airports, cemeteries, etc. To, um, to kind of put back that functional area, we've developed the new um, functional urban area classification, which you might want to use instead of urban areas if you're looking at, um, looking at urban spaces. And this is, a, this is just a picture of the map that we developed to go out with it. So you can see in here, and we found, found this rather interesting with the COVID, um, and in terms of trying to determine where the Auckland boundaries were for COVID. Mm -hmm. So this set of data was based on the commuting, commuting to work data from the census. So you can see that that yellow area in the middle there for Auckland is our new core urban area that's de designed based on the population density, et cetera. But that travel to work boundary extends out quite a long way, as you can see, up as far as Walkworth, which is its own functional urban area, and, and quite far south to take in Puk Puk Pocono and Clevedon, I think that one is there. So if you don't want to use an ur the straight urban area, you might want to look at using the, um, the new functional urban area classification. So um, just a quick tour around the country. You can see in yellow where the urban cores are 
and where these new um, bigger uh, functional urban areas are. They're like a labour market area, basically, where um, people are travelling to. So, um, so Wellington, which you might be interested in, joins up the four urban areas and into um, a wide area that goes up, up the wire wrapper there. And um, Masterton is a separate one, Kapiti Coast, et cetera, going right up there. So you can actually see that people, um, that boundary extending further up. So that's just a quick look at that one. There's another related classification. I don't think I've got a map for this one um, based on accessibility. And if anybody used the old urban rural experimental profile, which classified rural areas by their degree of proximity um, to urban areas, this is the one to use. Um, I won't go through it. Um, so yes, yeah, so a lot of people have used that 2004 urban rural experimental profile in the past, including the Ministry of Health. They're what's used to um, to um, to allocate funding for DHB funding. The rural component for that. I think I'll find them. I'll just go down to the map here. So yes, yeah, so so this is. Um, So this is uh, um, uh, the map of urban accessibility. So it looks a bit different. So anyway, so that's a few different uh, classifications you can use. Right, uh, moving on. <laughs> Let's have a look at some data where you might find some data. Um, there is a dedicated oh, page Anne. for... And got a couple of questions just yep. on something we've covered recently. Um, so question from Kat is around there's a diff why is there a, a SA1 2020 and also a 2021 is there is the difference significant right we do what's called the annual boundary release so every year we update the boundaries uh, oh gosh where did it go um, I'll just go back here again um, so there's an annual boundary release and um, so sometimes there's no changes from the previous year. And we try to keep the changes, uh, we're trying to minimize the changes um, between censuses. Um, the small areas for mesh blocks will continue to update that. And we're going through a major process at the moment, but we're not going to update the higher geographies until next year. Um, so, so small changes go through. There's been a boundary change that came in force on, to, on the 1st of March. Um, between Tauranga and Western Bay are plenty. So we've updated those um, geography. We're not going to publish that, but it's available if people want it. So you'll see in here the publications. Um, this is the annual boundary release that goes out in December and um, is based on for the next year. So that's where you'll find it. And it, yes, you said it goes back to, um, go straight, you can go straight to the data service to get it. Doctor. Oh, no, that's probably just my title. So I showed you how to find the data in the geographic data service. Mm. Um, so we won't go through that again. Here we go. Um, now, there's a page for census data, and this is on the page. So you can also access this SA1 data set from this page here um, and download data from there. And it's split, and because it's such a large file, it's split into regions, so you might want to just download one, one file, one Excel file, um, and that'll give you the same data. Um, census has a page, so if you wanted to know about census, you can find 2018 census data here. Yep. Um, and, um, and through all through there. So that's, so the data set you're looking for is um, that SA1 data set update in March 2020. So, um, so all the data is there. I was going to show you the census place summaries and you may, um, um, due to the functionality of this, 
it's not easy to find where you live. So, so this is a summary of data for um, um, for different areas. So, which electorate were you in again, Dwayne? Which um, SA two? Uh, in Taita, I'm not sure which. Uh... Okay, I'll type in Taita. Probably. So there we go. You are in one of those. Yeah. You have to know which area you live in before you can get the this data. Did that happen? Tighter, um, tighter south. Tighter south. Oh. Doesn't matter. That's okay. Doesn't matter. So that will bring up your we whole lot of data and it'll bring up graphs, etc. Um, if you want, if you don't know what SA2 you are in, it sends you back to the geographic boundary viewer. So um, there's a lot to be desired in this in this um, tool, um, not the least just being able to just type in your address here and either showing a map or even just using, you know, the, the addressing file to be able to say which SA2 you live in um, that you can get data. Let's see if I can click on something. Oh, I don't know why it's not working today. Never mind. Uh, anyway, so the regions are there as well. So I'll just, um, so this will just show you the sort of data that's available in there. So it's summarized in there. So this is all the data from the census. So you'll find that as well. Um, so, and to get back to that data again, that's, that's where the data for those, if you want to quick, download of one of the questions you can download that and buy by single question from here so that's also a bit helpful right um nz.stats let's go into there because a lot of you probably use nz.stat as another place um, where there is a lot of um, data over various years and once again, you can get data for earlier years in here, and it's probably for earlier years, it will be by area units if you're looking for small areas. Um, there's other data too by other, um, by other um, geographies. So I think the justice, for example, is by, um, by district, um, et cetera. So you can get other data in there as well. Um, the um, population data here, it also the um, population estimates are also in here, but as I said, they're in the data service, so you're better off using that. Um, another set of data I wanted to show you today um, and let you know that this is getting loaded up in the data service in the next couple of weeks. So we have an extensive time series of business de demography um, by, um, by industry and statistical area. So this is the number of businesses um, and the number of employees for businesses. And you can get data here by industry. So you can go in here and you can say you want, um, now I've forgotten how to do this again, if you want to select that level, you can select that level and that should select everything in that level. Oh, no, it didn't. That, that select level with a um, node. Yeah. It's no. worth actually having a bit of a practice in there if you are using this one. Um, you can save yourself a lot of time by just taking an extra two minutes to figure out how that works when, yeah. you're, when you're using it. Um, with so this, I did find that, a select all. So you can customize your layout here. So, um, so at the moment it's got this. So this is, I will show you, I'll go back and we'll have a look at the area from there. So I've selected um, area, but in, within this, there is data by right down to statistical area to SA2s. So you can drill down there. And if you select that, I think it selects all. Well, then select level. But, level but good news on that front, as I said, uh, what we're getting put into the data service is a set for 2020, and they'll be on the SA2 2020 geography. Um, 
by one digit and six. So that's um, agriculture versus manufacturing versus government, et cetera. So that'll be available to download and we hope to get that up next week sometime. Because if you do download this, they've got some weird um, labels on them and actually taking the labels um, for those um, statistical areas and having to remove um, all the different codes on them is a bit of a pain. So, um, yeah. so as I said, this is a great time series and this data there now for 20, 21 years, going right back to 2000, and it gets rebased every year onto the latest geography. So this is all on the SA2 geography for 2020. You can also get it by Territorial and Regional Council, Territorial Authority and Regional Council. Be so, quite a change in these next couple of years, I expect, um, and in those those data sets with the change in economic times and yeah. and and things. So it'd be an interesting data. Set. That was yeah. that was actually a really useful one to to use in lockdown level four. Um, there was a lot of work going on about employment and concerns that the industry, you know economy was going to take a a big nosedive, which fortunately it didn't do. Uh, anywhere near as, as bad as we thought it might. Yes. Well, it, well, it's interesting you say that because I was chatting with the manager of the business register the other day and, and you know, more people working from home, their location um, is changes. And the other thing to be wary of with this is that a lot of it's based on um, the tax data set. So mm. we get information from the client register file. So if the if the address doesn't get up, updated regularly, um, then the quality is not that high. And, and a lot of addresses are, are the accountant's address. So you'll see a lot of Queen Street yeah. farmers, for example. If you look at the Queenstown, at the Queen Street SA2, you'll see a lot in agriculture, but that's because they've got um, the wrong address. So mm. So um, I was talking to um, to the manager about using the COVID um, tracer app and um, and the barcodes. Um, they're looking at getting an update of those to be able to update and improve the data, uh, the location data on business register. And question for you, the, on the left-hand side there, where it says geographic units, I think from memory, am I right in thinking anything that's got mention of geographic units is a layer that's of interest to GIS people. However, yes. those ones just above the enterprises by yep. overseas yes, doesn't have, um, yep. yeah. So yeah. there's only a limited number of layers that are yeah. of interest. The statistical, area, statistical unit model for um, the business register at start to the enterprise, there is one above it called the enterprise group. So that would bring all the progress of, all the might bring all the new worlds together, for example. Uh, although that might not be a good example. Um, and then there's a kind of activity, so that tries to get the same, whether the manufacturers versus uh, um, retailers that are in a similar industry, and then the geographic unit. So most of the small businesses, of course, are single geographic enterprises. So um, the data, and so we're reliant on the Inland Revenue for providing the correct data. For the big um, units, such as Countdown, for example, they survey them every year and get the, um, I think they still do that, get the locations of the supermarkets and the number of workers. Right. Um, cool. And or they are pushing them out using the data from um, the employer monthly schedule from the Inland Revenue. And I'm just thinking, I am keep interrupting you. Um, I'm just conscious of the time. You wanted yes. to go on to... Uh... Yep. NZ. Yep, no, no, that's, that's right. So I think that was most of the um, data where you'd find data in, um, in there in the NZ.stat. So I've left a few things, a very quick things for last for you to have a look probably in your own time, but I'll just link on them. We have a data map hub here where we put most of our maps that we produce for, um, for census and other bits and pieces. So oh, you might want to have a look through there and see some of the work that we do, um, some work around, um, yes, yeah, so a lot of that census data, um, different ways of presenting data, such as uh, the hexagons here. Um, we're currently working on, a, on the um, population grid proposal to look at being able to produce data on one kilometre populations. 
Um, so that was something exciting. Um, we talked about the impact of COVID and this is a new branch, an independent branch of Stats NZ that's um, creating new statistics and outputs. And um, they collected data from the cell phone companies to look at daytime and nighttime populations during um, COVID. So it's taking a while to load. But if you want to have a look at a different way to present data um, and not always, not always graphically, um, you need to know where the areas are um, and you need to spend a bit of time having a look at this data and um, looking at the graphs to see um, what they represents. Some interesting posters, I think, came out of, of this data. I can't remember where yes. I saw that poster. But... And they're all gone because I tried to get one hmm. <laughs> and I ended up getting one, something that wasn't quite comprehensible, something different. Yes, so they're like um, stars. Um, yes. Yeah. I will send you a link to that if you like, and you can throw yeah. it in there because we'll it's the not doc. on that page. It's a blog. They have blogs, so if you go in here, you can read their blogs. Um, no, I'll view more reports. So you'll find it if you have a play around there. Um, the census commuting data. Oh, I talked about that um, travel to work data. We ran a competition and um, this was the winner um, and it comes up with some snazzy stuff here to be able to, is it just going to load? Oh, come on, load for me. Oh, okay, you maybe have to click on it. Where is, the, this is the airport. So when there was a lot of talk about where the COVID, where the COVID, where the workers are, mm -hmm. Yep. This is a great tool to be able to look to see where they're coming from. So you can see the uh, 22,554 people travel to Auckland Airport for work or school. Um, and that mm -hmm. shows where they come from in the different sizes um, of um, represent um, larger percentages of people traveling to there. So you can see they don't just come from South Auckland. They actually come from all over, all over Auckland and some even further afield. I think we should we should point out that that Auckland airport is not just the airport, but a few of the neighbouring yes, uh, yes. areas as well. Yep. Yeah, it was, it's generally the whole industrial area. When we designed the SA2s, which are used here, we designed um, some for um, business areas as well. So that's where that business demography is quite useful. Um, we also have a list, it's an informal list if you want to know whether an SO2 is a business business or residential or a mixed one, we can provide that information. We haven't made that official yet, but it might help you. Right. Now, I think the last thing I was going to show, and hopefully Dwayne's going to get time to demonstrate it, um, is where to find in a brief chat about the deprivation index in New Zealand deprivation index and the other one the index of multiple deprivation so this page here is a good page to go to to find all of that information um, and it's hosted by the University of Otago which is the pH, which is the university responsible for the um, New Zealand deprivation index whereas the um, the other one is the one that's um, by um, Dan Exeter and team from Auckland University. So there's actually a presentation there that tells you what the differences are. But as you scroll down here, you will come across a lot of spreadsheets and information about the latest version of the New Zealand Deprivation Index. Um, the 2018 index was designed on the new SA1s because they closely approximate the areas of interest. And in here there's the research reports and um, then there's also some files and these are the ones that I hope you've had time to have a look at them. Um, Good to go. I'm pointing you at these ones rather than the nz.stat downloads because these ones are all set up and prepared for you to be able to download them and link them to, to your geography and, um, and your away. 
So um, as you see, all the names along the top have got underscores in, so it's not going to trip anything over. Yeah. And it's a 2018 version one, which I should have said, and I was going to point you in that direction. So, um, so yes, so there's also the usually resident population in this data set as well. So if you want a quick ex entry into Stats NZ data, this is a good one. Um, I put a little bit on the back of this sheet about the New Zealand Deprivation Index. It uses a range of census variables um, to, um, to calculate an index um, from one to 10. So their um, deciles with one is the least deprived and 10 is the most deprived. So and that's the opposite, isn't it? For this, for some reason, the deciles for schools they're not the same as deprivation. Yes, yes. They're the inverse. So yes, a yes. decile, now I can't remember, is a decile one school is from a fairly well-off area and a decile yeah. 10 school is from a one of the, the less well-off areas, yes, I think. Yes, I think but so. it's the opposite to NZ debt, I think, yep. is the, the trick. Um, just one more thing before I hand over to to Dwayne, who's going to give you a bit of a demo. If you've used this in the past, they've actually gone through um, and um, applied the mesh blocks to the um, to the census area, old census area units. So if you want to carry the old series forward, you can. But at the moment, we haven't backcasted data prior to the 2006 census onto the new geographies. It's a project which I would dearly love to do. Um, but we're currently not resourced to do that. So you'll find all the data for earlier years in here as well, going right back to 1991. Cool. And Adrian has kindly put the link to the Data Ventures blog on the chat there as well. So we'll oh, add great. The, Thanks, Adrian. Uh, cool. Trick for, um, for those who are, are using this data or who are wanting to try this that we're going to show in a moment, Download the Excel file, not the text file, and I'll show you why that is too. Right, over to you. Thanks, Anne. So what I wanted to, to do or um, volunteered to do, because Anne had to swap laptops, is I'm just going to share my screen here. Um, we, we wanted just to very quickly show doing a join in, in GIS of adding that data from Data Finder and from a different part of the, the stats website, or in this case, from uh, Otago University of joining those in, in GIS and just something to be aware of. So what I've done is just while Anne was, was talking, because um, we only agreed this like five minutes before, um, I went and I download statistical area two Data set. So I took this one, generalized, downloaded as a geodatabase, and then based on this link here to the NZ Deprivation Index, um, I came here and I grabbed the SA2, first of all I grabbed the SA2 data in text format, and I loaded them both up. Here is that text data. And so I'm looking at this thinking, okay, what am I going to join these two on? And I haven't done the join yet, but you can see here's that table that Anne was showing us. Now, with this one, I can see the, the text is uh, justified to the left and the numbers are justified to the right. When I come into, now, which one was that? That was the Otago text. When I come into this one and I look at what am I going to join here, I can see that my IDs are justified to the left. So it's recognized them as text, uh, even though they're numbers. And then I can see my, my um, descriptions are also characters. So on a whim, I went and grabbed the spreadsheet just to see, okay, what happens if I add the spreadsheet? And I see there that when I download the Excel file format from Otago, I get one that comes up as SA code on the left, which means it's recognized as text, whereas these are right justified. My object ID is also looks like a, this is my, my understanding as well. Uh, having not practiced, I'm now going to do the join. And not having done this since, when was this? 
more than one year. Okay, so in point join field from there, I'm going to look here. I'm going to go, I think I'm after this one. It's the one, yep. Yep. I'm going to join my spreadsheet, which is this one here. And it's picked up that. I'm just going to press this to test. Well, that worked better than it did for me. <laughs> Checking for invalid characters. A great success. Okay, so it's going to work. So now it's good. Right. And now when I click on one of these, I've got the joined data. Cool. First time in a long time, and it works sweetly. I'll tell you one thing that um, in lockdown level four um, that the, the guys at Eagle did is they put into ArcGIS Online, they, they took the recently released stats data and they took out all of the the um the underscores and things and made it all pretty and beautiful and we just add that to our maps as well but that's of course a simplified single set but that's the same workflow for if you get it from nz.stats or any other data set as well and things you may have to clean up your spreadsheet before you add it in there as Anne was saying it's ready to use so yeah cool um i don't know if you've got time Dwayne, but it's yeah. quite illustrative when you um um, to show the data when you um, make them what do you call a word um, <laughs> symbolize them yeah let's do um, it and, 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 and it just shows up um, the various parts of Auckland's a good example and we were looking at Auckland at Christchurch earlier and um, now have I got it? yeah you can use a 10 point scale use it symbolize on um I tell you what I like is really like going from red to green. That's kind of green. That's what I do too. If you're not um, colorblind, it's good. And the other one I downloaded, which I was hoping to show you, was the SO ones. Um, so okay. you could look at the composition of each SO two by SO one and see just the difference between um, between areas. So, so you can see there that the least deprived areas are generally in the rural areas, and the most deprived areas are around that South Auckland area, because that's kind of because scan. of the um, the variables, the composition of the um, index, income, employment, yeah, uh, living space, living conditions, qualifications, etc. Here is that that. Uh... Yeah, so this is really, really valuable. I, yeah. I don't know how many times I've tried to, <laughs> tried to remember what these were over the past year, but mm. owned, not living in own home. I mean, this is you know the housing situation at the moment. This is gonna... Hey, well, um, that's that's been fantastic going through that with you today, and I really appreciate uh, the time and also being able to sort of tap into all of those tips and tricks that you've described. Um, along the way um, and I know that just based on the feedback there um, the people watching have been really appreciative as well as well and there's a comment there we're lucky to have and it's stats NZ and yeah tall, tall talk all that. well that's nice <laughs> yeah. so um, yeah big thanks to you and for joining